Yeah, so today I am uh, very lucky to have the opportunity to interview Mr. Gideon Frankel, the current principal of the Frank Sinatra School of the Arts and a former LaGuardia High School vocal major. Uh, thank you so much for agreeing to speak to me today. Yeah, great to have you here. Before we start talking about your time at LaGuardia, I'd like to get to know you a bit better. So could you please walk us through your background before high school and some of the experiences you had after LaGuardia that helped build you into the wonderful principal you are today, including perhaps the influence that your world music promoter father and school guidance counselor mother may have had on your interests and career choices? Yeah, definitely. I mean, one, um, it's great to have you here, and I see you've done your homework on everyone that, you're, that you are interviewing, so that's, that's uh, very impressive. Thank you. For a student of your age, I think um, clearly you'll go on to be a great journalist, filmmaker, researcher, historian, whatever you, documentarian, whatever you decide to do with your future. I appreciate it. Um, but definitely growing up on the Upper West Side of Manhattan um, in the Columbia University area um, in the 80s and 90s um, was a very rich cultural experience. Um, it was a diverse neighborhood. Um, I went to diverse public schools and, um, you know, was always exposed to the arts through my father, who promoted concerts. I grew up basically in and around Lincoln Center, where my father did a lot of work, Carnegie Hall, where he promoted lots of shows, Town Hall, um, and, you know, large and small venues across the city. Um, so I grew up listening to world music, to fo a lot of folk music. Uh, my daughter's name is Arlo, after Arlo Guthrie, so big folk music, uh, hippy-dippy fan there, exposed, you know, by my parents. Um, Pete Seeger grew up with um, listening and going to concerts of Tito Puente, Toots and the Maytiles, um, lots of world music in different genres. Um, and... From a, as young as I can remember, I, on Fridays and Saturday nights, I was going to shows at Carnegie Hall and Lincoln Center. So that was quite a unique and, and fun upbringing. Um, my mom was a guidance counselor in the DOE public schools since 1971. Um, and so as early as I can remember, I was also in schools all the time, you know, with her. Um, she worked um, all over the city in Brooklyn. I remember her telling stories that I was in the, her little carrier, you know, um, when she went to work or when she went to check in with students at their houses in Brooklyn. Um, she worked at schools in Harlem and she worked um, at schools on the Upper West Side as well. So I went to Central Park East Elementary School, which was on 106th and Madison Avenue. It's well known for its really beautiful graffiti courtyard. It's been in a lot of films and movies and t you know TV um, features on that yard and courtyard. Um, and it was one of the first alternative schools um, in the city that were making sure that it was a priority to have students from all different neighborhoods of the city. So it went to a really wonderful, rich, diverse elementary school. Um, went to a really great community middle school called Crossroads Middle School in the PS165 building on 109th between Broadway and Amsterdam. And then when it came time to apply to high school, um, I had always enjoyed singing. I, I, I don't know if I was very good at it, <laughs> but, you know, I was in there with the rest of the boys whose voices were changing and who were self-conscious and who... You know, but my mom encouraged me to prepare an audition for LaGuardia. I went and visited, um, you know, did the tour and fell in love with the school. And the idea that you could be with creative students and have something else to look forward to than just your academic classes was really appealing to me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I enjoyed learning and I enjoyed academics. And I also enjoyed different art forms and especially, you know, singing and music. Um, so I auditioned and I got in and... And, and it was really fun to go there. I had a great experience, and I knew I know we'll get into that later. Um, I also liked sports growing up. I played sports in West Side Little League and Soccer League, basketball. I played sports at LaGuardia, um, so that was a big part of my life. Um, and then I went on from LaGuardia to Syracuse University. I studied broadcast journalism and political science. Um, and, you know, having a strong foundation in... 
Um, the academics at LaGuardia helped me, you know, to be a good writer and researcher and, and really have an interest in politics and journalism. Um, enjoyed my time there and then went on to work in TV um, news for a while, being a news producer at local stations in upstate New York. Then I worked at um, NBC News at 30 Rockefeller Center in my early to mid-20s. And then um, I had always enjoyed working with young people and, you know, I had... I had volunteered to put together a school newspaper and do a school newscast when I worked in upstate New York, and I thought, you know, maybe I should look into that as a, as a career, um, as a long-term career, and that's what I did, and now, you know, 15, 20 years later, here I am, um, but definitely, you know, growing up in New York City, attending public schools, and being a graduate of LaGuardia, um, still continues to be a huge part of my life and and was formative for me in my later adult experiences. Great. Thank you. Um, for listeners who might not know what actually happens in the vocal department, could you please give us a brief description of the program as you experienced it? Uh, what were your educational goals and what did a day in the life of a LaGuardia vocal major look like? Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't really know what to expect. Um, I knew LaGuardia was a good school, and I was just excited to have been accepted. Um, I wouldn't say that I was, you know, overly um, passionate about vocal music at the time or about being a singer. I had done a lot of, um, like, children's choir in elementary school, and my elementary school had a really great music program with um, Barry Soloway, doing the choral program and um, Roberta, t Roberta, I forget her last name, but she was profiled in lots of movies and, um, and different news documentaries for her violin program that she started there. Um, so between Barry and R Roberta and that upbringing, I played violin, I sang in the chorus, and I always loved, you know, music. Um, and performing music. So when I got to LaGuardia, I wasn't, um, I didn't feel like I would be a professional musician or a professional singer, but I was excited to be in a place where people were serious, you know, about music, way more talented <laughs> than I was. Um, and I had a great time, you know, in my vocal classes and my academic classes. I do remember, you know, getting there and thinking, wow, this is going to be like really serious, you know. I had, um, all, all of the all of the folks that were the prominent names in the in the mid to late nineties at LaGuardia. So I had Mr. Ludwig for opera. I had Miss Ext for music theory. She's a legend um, in the in the music department. I had um, the wonderful, amazing Mr. Reberg for gospel choir and concert choir. Um, he had a big influence on my life, as he did for hundreds of students that went through LaGuardia at that time. Um, I, I went and sang in churches in Mount Vernon and the Bronx and Co-op City um, with him and with the gospel choir at LaGuardia and, and had some great experiences through that program. Um, Mr. Lertzman, um, who I think at the time was one of the directors of the vocal department or the head of the vocal department, I always found music theory to be so difficult. <laughs> I, I just couldn't, it was hard for me, um, and I didn't enjoy that class, but I did learn, you know, how to sight read and how to read music, um, which was a great skill through a lot of struggle. It was like learning a, a language, which was hard. It was hard, Spanish class was hard for me too, you know, to learn a language. Um, but, um, so I sang opera, I sang in the concert choir, I sang in the gospel choir, um, I, I enjoyed learning Italian arias, Seben Crudele. I, I'll never forget that song. <laughs> Seben Crudele mi fai langui. When I'm like 90, I'll remember that song. It was drilled into my head so much. <laughs> sempre fedele, sempre fedele ti voglio amar. I mean, I've never sang it, I've never learned it or sang it since I was like 17, 18 years old, but I'll never forget that song. <laughs> yeah. I learned that song when I was, you know, at LaGuardia as, as a little high school um, kid, and I'll, I'll never forget that. Um, so, 
you know, those experiences shape you and then you remember it. You know, I haven't sang that in probably five years or talked about that song. But once you learn a song, you never forget it. Um, I had never sang Italian arias before, you know, so that was really fun and really interesting. And we had two hours of vocal music classes a day. So it was like your two hours of vocal music classes, they're going to be serious. Um, you're going to be exposed to new things, new music. Your teachers take it seriously. They hold you accountable. Um, and what was really interesting was like towards the middle of freshman year through the end of freshman year, people would say, oh, you go to LaGuardia, you know, for vocal, my aunt or her, you know, I go to my aunt's house for dinner. Oh, how's LaGuardia? Sing us something. And I would actually start singing and like feeling comfortable singing and confident singing. They'd be like, wow, that's amazing. You're becoming a really good singer. And over time, it, that, that's what the process and the education was. Um, the best, the best music education that you could get in New York City. Um, and I became a really solid singer. And I remember that it, it, it ultimately, you know, cultivated me into someone who loves singing and, and ended with me singing a solo at graduation on the Lincoln Center stage, Whoa. which, like, who, the, who would think that, you know, yeah. when they're 12, 13? So it was a really rich experience, and I loved... Um, you know, there were some moments in the, when you're in the back of the choir and you're singing the same song for the, you know, 20th time. You're like, oh, we got to sing the same song. It's a little boring. or this, But for the most part, it was an extremely rich and fun experience in the vocal program. And I became a really good singer and learned a lot. Um, and I still love, you know, I don't sing anymore. I sing in the shower. That's about it. I try to sing to my kids to put them to sleep. I have a seven-year-old daughter and a four-year-old son, and I sing them to put them to sleep, and I say, please stop, you're keeping us awake. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't really work. But, um, but yeah, I, I, loved, I loved the vocal program at LaGuardia. That's great. Thank you for that. As an educator at a similar New York City high school for performing arts, could you please share your general observations regarding what has stayed the same, what has changed since you were a student at LaGuardia? How have the kids changed? Have they changed? Yeah, I'm, you know, I saw that question on your list and I started thinking about it. I think it's a great question. Thank you. But it's also one that's really hard to answer. It's, 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 it's a hard question as an adult who's, re, who's, you know, though I'm exposed to the student experience every day, I'm not, um, I am not a student and I certainly you know, have not been at LaGuardia or know a lot about what's happening there now other than it's an amazing school and continues to be and I hear, you know, great things from all of the students there. I think that, you know, as society changes and as we all evolve and grow and develop, I think that one of the things as an educator who's gone through the experience of being a student at a performing arts school um, it, it's more about the student experience and the student voice um, that's valued and that is important to the process of learning. And I'm not sure that that was the case. I don't think that was the case at LaGuardia when I was there, you know, in the mid to late 90s. Um, it was kind of like, this is the way we do things. And... Um, you know, you can have your opinions, but this is the way we do things. Whereas now, I think we've evolved to a, in, a, in a good way to a point where it's like, this is how we do things, the collective we, students, uh, teachers, administrators, families, the school community, this is how we do things. And we want everyone's voice in that process. It doesn't mean that everyone will always be happy with every decision or every experience, but at least you feel that you're a part of the process, that you belong at the school you go to, that you're welcomed, that your you know, identity, your self-expression, your cultural identity, your sexual orientation, your gender identity is affirmed and valued in your place of learning. You know, I think that's really important. And though LaGuardia was an extremely diverse 
place. And although at that time, it was probably one of the few high schools where there were many LGBTQ plus youth that were out and open um, at school, it wasn't something that was talked about a lot or that was, you know, brought up um, in terms of, hey, how, how are you feeling? Are you represented in your <coughs> curriculum? Um, it was something we knew. Yeah, LaGuardia is an awesome, diverse place where you make lots of different types of friends and you, everyone's accepted and it's great. But it wasn't, you know, we weren't pushed. And, and society wasn't at that point and we weren't talking about those kinds of things in education. Some people were. Um, Central Park East, where I went to elementary school, was. Um, but it depends on how evolved you were and, and what type of learning community you were a part of. And, you know, so I think LaGuardia and Frank Sinatra in our early days, you know, there wasn't such a focus on that. And I think um, most schools that want their students to be excited to attend and want to their students to be leaders and to be ready for life beyond high school, take those things into account now. And I think that's the biggest change is the importance of student voice and student experience in the learning process. And, and that is in the academic learning process and in the arts learning process and what it means to be creative and what it means for your own self-expression and creativity to be valued and supported and promoted while an art student at a performing arts school. Yeah, that's great. There's a saying that I like. Um, they say the world is made of stories, not just atoms. Could you please share a personal story about your experience at Guardia? Something you treasure about your experience at school, or something that no one else knows but you? I saw that question too. That's a tough one also. Um, you know, first, I, I would just say, you know, socially, I had a great time at LaGuardia. Um, I met lots of very interesting um, friends um, from different parts of the city. Mm -hmm. You know, I went to a Sweet 16 on Staten Island. And that <laughs> growing up on the Upper West Side, you don't go to Staten Island that much. So I don't, I don't know if I had been to Staten Island. Um, I had friends in Brooklyn. I had friends in Queens. Where, you know, started traveling to the outer boroughs from having grown up in Manhattan. I give a lot of credit to those students who come from Staten Island to LaGuardia and wake up at 5 in the morning to get oh, yeah. on that ferry. That's very impressive. Um, but I think that, I think that, you know, I don't know if I have anything, any stories that are unique or that are, you know, special, unique to me. But I think the, you know, the performing opportunities were really special. Um, the moments where you realized that a staff member, you know, really cared about you beyond what, you know, beyond the normal student, you know, teacher kind of every day come into class, how you doing relationship, mm -hmm. but like really cared. I, I referenced Mr. Reberg um, before who, you know, who I loved and, and spent a lot of time with outside of the classroom at performances around the city. Um, and he taught me a lot, you know, about singing and about life. Uh, Mr. Carano on the student newspaper um, was an amazing, um, an amazing mentor. I mean, I learned how to write from him. Um, I learned how to do interviews like you're doing from him. We created the student newspaper together in his, I, I loved, I worked on the student newspaper, I was a sports editor. Really? And I loved um, being in the, in the, um, I think it was a combination of like the senior lounge and the student newspaper area. I can't exactly remember where it was in the building, but it was kind of like a long room and then the offices were behind it. And I think at the time, I don't know exactly factually, but my memory is like there was a ping pong table, there was a couple couches there. Um, that there, there might have been, you know, computers weren't, computers were just starting at that time. I went to LaGuardia from 1994 to 1998. So it was like, 
I think of the teachers, I think the guidance counselors had some big computers, you know, on their desks. Um, definitely the principal and in the administrative offices, but it wasn't like there were computers all over the place, you know. So we did do there, but there were some computers in the, in the um, journalism, you know, suite or journal, journalism senior lounge area. We would type up our stories and he would come out and, you know, critique the stories. And I loved Mr. Carano. I remember Mr. Polanco, who was a Spanish teacher, and his big saying was, Gideon, don't play the fool. And, uh, you know, when we would joke around in class, don't play the fool, like, don't be the class clown in class, you know. So I remember him. Um, of course, the famous and infamous Dr. Rose and her red pen, which I'm sure you'll hear about from other people you interview. She taught me to write and, 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 um, and had a research and write and was a really tough teacher who you don't appreciate at the time, but you appreciate later on. Um, as you become an adult, and especially for people that become teachers. Um, I played sports, Mr. Sternbeck on the, on the uh, basketball team, uh, Mr. T on the basketball team. Um, I loved playing basketball at LaGuardia. We had such a good time. Um, and and, all, and all, of the, all of the friends that I made, you know, um, on the soccer team, um, we had all of my friends that I grew up with. We were on the LaGuardia soccer team, and we made it to the playoffs, and it was really, really fun. Um, and on the basketball team, we, we made it to the playoffs one year. And um, so just all of those, you know, experiences that when you think about high school now, at my age, um, you know, 25 years removed from high school, you think about high school, and you remember, you know, maybe not, all of these like uh, this was such a special moment but all of these people and all of these experiences that influenced you and shape who you are you know today definitely great now it's time for the speed round <laughs> I'm gonna ask you a couple of quick questions and uh, just kind of first thing that really pops into your mind Let's see. Did you have any idea that you might want to be an educator when you were in high school? Zero. None. I can't believe I'm a principal. It's so crazy. I would never have thought it. What other interests did you have? I was really into journalism. I wanted to be a sports reporter. Um, and I went to Syracuse University to, to their journalism program, which is known for you know, well-known sports journalists coming out of their program. And I got there, and I was just like, "Yeah, I'm not good enough to be <laughs> to be a sports reporter or play-by-play -play analyst for sports. These kids are amazing; they know everything." Um, but I enjoyed journalism. I always enjoyed reading the newspaper, watching the news, current events, um, and I thought I would have a career in as as some type of you know producer or reporter for TV news. Oops. Is there a different LaGuardia division that you would have considered auditioning for when you were a teen? I barely had talent as a singer, so definitely, definitely not for me. Um, I really, I'm, I'm, I'm no, I, I was not a good dancer, draw stick figures, um, maybe drama, probably if there was another one it would be drama, like I, you know, I think I might have auditioned for drama and probably didn't get in even though I wanted to be in vocal anyway. Um, I can't remember. I know I learned a monologue. I might have chickened out on the day of the audition to actually go through with it. Um, but it, drama would be the only one. Everything else has zero, zero talent. And that's why I'm like blowing away every day here. And I feel so lucky to be the principal here and, and to work here. Is like I can walk into any classroom mm -hmm. and see students doing amazing art beyond anything I could ever do and their talent always blows me away and inspires me. Please name one of your favorite songs from your high school student and uh, share why you loved it. <laughs> I mean I guess it's the song that I auditioned on because why not choose that one? <laughs> um, yeah. Go into the chapel and we're gonna get married. Go into the chapel and we're 
Gonna get married. Gee, I really love you and where? Gonna get married. Going to the chapel of love. You know, so thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, so you can see, I'm not like this professional singer, but I like singing. And, um, and uh, so I sang that for my audition. I don't know, I always liked kind of like barbershop quartets or acapella tunes. Um, but then like radio songs, there was a song that I, that I absolutely loved. Turn the radio up to that sweet sound. Hold me close, never let me go. Take me over the edge, make me lose control. Do, 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 do. And that, I think I called up a radio station once when <laughs> I was in high school and like requested that song. I vaguely remember that experience. So I love that. Um, but just, you know, I listened to the radio. I, I liked, again, a lot of the barbershop stuff. And then... In high school, I was exposed to gospel music for the first time, and I absolutely loved it. And so, um, you know, I had never really heard or sang gospel music before LaGuardia. I ended up being in the gospel choir at LaGuardia, as I've mentioned, with Mr. Reberg, and then I continued and was in the gospel choir at Syracuse University, too, and I just loved I loved the music. It was, a, you know, I really loved the music. Um, and I remember, you know, Lucia is a student that people at, that went to LaGuardia in the 90s will remember. She was probably the best singer in our class. And when she took the stage for those gospel performances and, it, and the concert hall, the auditorium was sold out, you know, th over a thousand people. And she came up out of the choral risers for her solo. I mean, the whole place would stand up. You would get chills. She would sing. And it was like, oh, my God, Lucia, go, girl, go, you know. And, and there were many singers like that, but Lucia was, Lucia was the best, you know, the best singer. You can ask anyone that was in the vocal program in the mid to late 90s. And, um, you know, just that gospel music I really, really enjoyed. So, you know, I liked everything, but I, but I, um, I liked that acapella barbershop stuff a little of the radio stuff and then gospel for sure great what was your favorite Broadway show when you were in high school why did it speak to you yeah I you know that's it that's interesting I was thinking about that question see you know this is your speed round but I still answer <laughs> the questions at length you know so you can tell oh, me to shut up shut up if you oh, want no I um I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about how a student today that was a vocalist or an actor or a musician growing up in New York City may answer that question differently, or someone who was really into, you know, like Broadway um, or wanted to be in musical theater. At, at our time at LaGuardia, there wasn't a musical. There wasn't an annual musical. There, what, there had just started to be like rising stars, I think, um, which was more solo or small group performances like a talent show. Um, but I didn't feel that connected to Broadway. I mean, you know, Broadway tickets were expensive. You got to remember, there was, there was barely an internet. Like, LaGuardia didn't have a website when I was there. I, I think... Colleges did, maybe high schools were just starting to. We were just figuring out, you know, what email was and what. So it wasn't as if we were exposed to everything on Broadway without getting to go see it. Mm -hmm. Now, certainly there was, you know, Por I've always loved Porgy and Bess. I think it's an amazing opera and an amazing musical. I've seen it on Broadway and I've seen it, you know, at Lincoln Center. And it's, I mean, it's just beautiful. So I always loved Porgy and Bess. Um... But I, you know, there was no Disney Plus. There wasn't, like, In the Heights or Hamilton being shown on TV. There wasn't all these musicals being shown on TV. So I didn't feel a close connection to Broadway as it was. Um, right around the end of high school, maybe my senior year, the, towards the end of my senior year or in my senior year, there was this one-man show called Freak with John Lake Wazamo that came on Broadway that I actually got to go see and I was blown away and I talked to everybody about it. I said, like, oh, that was an amazing show. Everybody should go see it. Um, but 
you know, that's, that's what I can remember. And then much later, you know, in my mid-20s, in 2006, I went off-Broadway to 37 Arts Theater and I saw In the Heights for the first time. And I was blown away by that. And I told everybody, In the Heights, you got to see In the Heights. It's this show at this little theater, 37 Arts, by the highway. And I saw it off-Broadway. And I probably saw In the Heights about six times on Broadway. And by that time, I had my own job. I could put a little money, you know. And I would take friends to go see it. Said, you got to see it. It's about Washington Heights. It's an ama It's amazing. Um, so, you know, but, but it wasn't as, in high school, I wasn't like, had this rich connection to Broadway or always going to see Broadway musicals, though, of course, you know, Phantom, Les Mis, um, Porgy and Bess, all of the classics, I've always loved, you know, some of the music, and then seeing them do it here, or seeing it at LaGuardia, I saw In the Heights at LaGuardia a few years ago, which was amazing, and, and, and really, really fun um, to see and be back there to see. So I, lo I think my, my love for musical theater has grown, especially being here, you know, at Frank Sinatra and celebrating the musicals every year. Um, but in high school, I didn't have a strong connection to Broadway, though I, you know, always loved hearing music and, and, and hearing about the different shows that were going on at that time. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Um, if you had to give one piece of advice to current LaGuardia students, what would it be? Whether, whether it's LaGuardia or Frank Sinatra or a student from anywhere else, like, I think there's so much, you know, it, it, that question's hard. All these questions are hard because then you're like, oh, I'm this old guy giving advice, you know, and I hated when old people gave advice to me and what do they know about my life? But I think, you know looking back on my time there, I think I was pretty open to experiences. So be open to new experiences and new types of people. Um, be curious. Um, I didn't really ask for like help or support when I needed it. Um, during my tougher moments, I kind of like hit that and kept that and just kind of like kept going. I would say, you know, young people need to I wish I would have asked for more help or support at times that were difficult. Um, you don't have to be perfect. We all make mistakes. We all have ups and downs. We all have anxiety and depression at times. Um, I think there's a lot of self-doubt in young people because of what they see on social media, because of what they see on the internet, and they think they have to be, you know, this way, or they have to... There's all these people who are more talented or more beautiful than them. I didn't have to deal with that in high school, and I'm glad I didn't. Um, but I think, you know, trying to, and it all sounds cliche, but trying to, despite the very real challenges that exist in our lives and in our society um, right now in the past few years, you know, trying to be kind to yourself, give yourself grace, celebrate your um, happy moments and your small victories, and not to be too hard on yourself to be perfect all the time. No one can be perfect all the time. And to try not to have so much self-doubt. Like, everybody is special. Everybody has unique gifts. Um, some people are more comfortable when they're 13, 14, 15, 16 sharing those gifts. And for some people it takes, you know, till they're 20, 30, 40. I'm still learning about myself. I'm still growing as a person. Um, and so that's a lifelong process. You don't need to figure it all out when you're 14 or 15 or 16. You have your whole life for that. And um, you don't need to be so hard on yourself. Do your best uh, each day, whatever that is for you, and ask for support and help when you need it. And, and you know, it's okay to be vulnerable. And I think I wasn't like that when I was in high school and I think that you know young people need to know that there are adults in their schools that care about them and that are there for them when they need support. Great. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today, Mr. Frankel. Your transition from a student at a school for the arts to a principal at a school for the arts is inspiring. And I really appreciate your willingness to be among the first to contribute to our LaGuardia archive. Well, I'm just grateful and blown away that you asked me to be part of this project. Um, I 
am also really impressed with your professionalism. Thank you. Um, and your preparation, you know, for this interview. Um, LaGuardia is an extremely special place. Um, it always has been and it always will be. Um, it has an extremely rich history and has impacted the lives of so many, so many, so many talented young people that have gone on to be superstars and also gone on to be, you know, principals and other things. Um, but I'm so glad that you're doing this project because it's important to keep the history of such a special place alive and as those who really were the first students there, um, you know, I think LaGuardia started in the 30s, 40s, um, so those, you know, those who were the first students there are getting older and um, unfortunately passing on, it's important to document the history of the school and, and the impact that it's had on so many lives. So I appreciate, as an alumni, I appreciate you doing this project. Um, and I'm so grateful that you asked me to be a part of it. Thank you so much. Hey, anytime. Thank you, sir. Thank you for being yeah. here. Hold on one second. Hello? Hi? What's that? I'm being interviewed right now, actually, by a student from LaGuardia. They're doing like an oral history project of all these alumni and everything. It's kind of cool. What's going on?